This is devotional number 304, and today's date is August 10th, 2017. We are looking at the subject of assurance of salvation this week. And at this point, I thought it would be helpful to remind ourselves of the dual nature within each believer. Quite possibly the tendency to emphasize one aspect more than the other can shape how we look at ourselves in terms of possessing or lacking assurance of salvation. Uh, Let's consider each side of a Christian's whole personality. 2 Corinthians 5.17 describes his new nature. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature or creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. We find similar language in Ezekiel 36.26. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh. And again, we have to keep in mind that this was the case during the day of salvation. On the other hand, Romans 7, 21 to 25, and 8, 1 through 2, delineate how sin is still a very present reality in our bodies which have not been redeemed. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man or in one's soul. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members or in my body. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord, so then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. The Apostle Paul, under divine inspiration, reveals in Romans 7.25 the scriptural assessment that a child of God must constantly keep in mind. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. Galatians 5, 16 through 18, and verses 24 to 25 uh, further add this. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. This internal dualism is the true Christian's greatest spiritual struggle, bar none. As Romans 7.24 pinpoints, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? The deliverance that Paul refers to is found in the words of 2 Corinthians 5.1-4 through which expresses the believer's yearning to be forever clothed with his glorified spiritual body. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle, which is our physical body, were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. 
For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. <clears throat> Pardon me. 1 John 3, 1 to 3 highlights this as well, adding the dimension of hope with regard to glorification, which is the final stage of salvation. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Now let's consider the, the term full assurance of hope. Uh, like faith, the subject of hope is prominently displayed throughout the entire Bible. As we read, for example, in Romans 8, 23 to 25. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Notice that in verses 24 to 25, God is highlighting the noun hope three times in its verb form twice. This is a significant passage in that God is giving us an accurate definition of what true biblical hope is. In essence, one is saved by hope, and yet hope, like faith, is unseen. And hence, a saved person is instructed to walk or live by faith, not by sight. According to 2 Corinthians 5:17. Hebrews 6, 11 through 12, and verses 18 through 19. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end, that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil. <clears throat> Excuse me. Please note how God is linking full assurance of hope with both faith and patience. There are three other citations that contain the Greek word 4136, which is rendered as full assurance and assurance. And I hope to develop that in our next lesson, Lord willing. Uh, but uh, summarizing what we've learned in today's study, a genuine believer has a dual personality. <clears throat> Excuse me. In his soul, he only wants to please God by obeying the scriptures. However, in his body, which has not become saved yet, he still sins. And at the end of the day of judgment, uh, he will be given uh, a glorified spiritual body if one is still alive. We also concluded that one is saved by genuine hope. And hope is the basis for obeying the Bible and the source of one's assurance of salvation.